Hey, so good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to my humble presentation. Yeah. So this presentation title is Professional Presentation Skills. And I hope you will enjoy it and learn from it what you need to present. Uh, a bit about me, I am Dr. Maytham. Uh, you can just call me Maytham, that's fine. My age is 39, yeah. And uh, I'm a system professor with a PhD in electrical and electronics engineering. Uh, I have been 15 years uh, of uh, academician experience here. Yeah? And socially talking, I'm married and a father of two angels. Yeah? <laughs> okay. So you feel free if you need to ask anything about me, you, I'm open book for about, about that. Okay, so um, someone said that uh, great speakers were not born, they are trained. That tells that no one really comes with knowledge from the first day he was born, he or she. So it's a, a, to be a, present, a presenter, a good presenter, you will actually need to train and get experience through. And that's what we are trying to do for today. The first part, which is uh, training, yeah? After this training, after today four hours training, you will be able to create infographics to present data and information in efficient way. Uh, design professional presentation slides using PowerPoint, uh, as there are many other tools, yeah, but we will use PowerPoint. Uh, choose the proper presentation tools and props. And finally, you will be able to present your idea in a professional uh, way. That gives the leadership impression. Okay? So, let's start our day with some ice-breaking activity. Uh, it's quite simple. We will have uh, something. Can you please pass me the note paper? Me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can, each of you, each right. of you take one. Okay. So, what you need to do is so simple. Just write your name, your profession, what you work, and then what your hobbies are. Maybe find this three hobbies. Three hobbies. Yeah. So a name, profession, and what hobbies you have. Let's say three of them. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, cutting glass. <laughs> no. Fisherman? So you put the slide here, but your aim 
your learning outcome might be different. Yeah, we will have one example about this. So to know your aim from the beginning, that's better than knowing it later or not thinking about it while you are doing the, your, uh, what do you call it, uh, your presentation sets. Okay. Uh, <coughs> why is it important? Why presentation is important? Uh, uh, people would say, okay, why not we just give the paper, we write what we want to say, give it to people, let them read, and that's it. Why do we need to stand here and present the information? Or I can simply do, print my slides and give to you. Why do I need to stand here? Yeah? So this is a light example. Firstly, let's read the article. Can you please read it? Uh, maybe, uh, Vicky, can you read the first one? When I was eight, my mother told me to eat all the food for my English because they just reached in Africa. Then I asked and received that daily. Then I grew up older and started to ask, how have I had this situation in Africa? I'm now a little bit overweight <laughs> because the mom forced her to eat. I hope they are happy as I have done my best to help. I ever go to I have ever go to Africa. Oh, if I, if I actually. Oh. Yeah. If I. If I ever go to Africa and I see my daddy, I will say that I did it for you. For you, right? Mm -hmm. So, you see, you read it, right? Now let's see the same, the same script presented by someone who is a, uh, a comedian, and you will see the effect, the difference of presentation. I think I have a kind of a strange relationship with okay. food. Okay. But I'm Yeah? 
maybe the first 10 times, they will have the same, yeah? And by the way, stage fear, it will depend on the audience, how the presenter if, uh, evaluate or look to the audience. If he feels the audience are uh, less knowledgeable than him, then he will be in control. But if he feels that he is presenting product managers and you know, uh, CEOs, uh, their stage fear will appear, right? Uh, same in the university, for example. My students, when they come, they will be checking <laughs> what they want to present. Yeah. So um, as well, that's um, that's normal for a human being until they gain confidence. So let's see um, some in the animation about stage fear. Short animation. Rapid breathing, I think we yesterday we 
practice a lot of <laughs> yeah. dry mouth and tight throat. Uh, this is what happened just now in the video. Have you noticed that when she starts talking and her voice disappears like here? Uh, that's as well one of the symptoms. Uh, trembling hand, knees, lips, voice. So uh, I have seen some people like when they want to start, they will say, uh, today, the, 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 you know, like uh, their tongue <laughs> rumbling. <laughs> Here. Uh, sweating, feeling coolish, that as well, what we saw, she, uh, they, they saw in the video. Nausea, uneasy feeling in stomach, that as well might appear. Okay? <clears throat> So why they get the stage fear? It might happen because of many uh, reasons, or any reason, any reasons in here. Not necessarily all, but maybe some of them. Yeah? For instance, negative past experience. Maybe before you had some experience that uh, you will memorize it at that moment when you want to present the new thing. Yeah? You say, okay, uh, I've been thrown by tomato before, so I am a bad presenter, you know? So if you are saying to yourself that you are a bad presenter, I cannot do it, yeah? That might be. The feeling of being not well prepared for your presentation. Uh, if you, for example, um, prepared for a presentation a week ago, and you are ready today, you will go with some kind of, or some level of confidence. But if you just prepare last minute and then you come to the front of the audience, that really will give you some negative uh, uh, factor. We don't like to be judged. Well, no one likes to be judged. Uh, that's, but unfortunately, we human beings tend to be judgmental most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. We judge the book from its cover, right? We say. <laughs> We don't feel that our idea is worth listening. Uh, that happens because maybe we are not believing in what we are presenting. Yeah, especially happened for companies, uh, workers, when they force a person go and present this. You know, I'm not convinced, but I have to present it well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we don't think that we can express our ideas clearly. Again, this is um, a self-feeling, yeah? And our body is filled with energy because we sense an uh, emergency situation. And that happens, actually, many people. Uh, they might have this energy inside them. And because of that, they will start shaking, you know? They, they have the energy, but they don't know how to translate it, you know? <laughs> Right away. Oh. It, the new energy is there, but they have to know if they are professional presenters, they will divert that energy from being uh, negative into positive energy. Yeah. So usually, for example, when I ask my students to present and I teach them about presentation, I will say, I know your first minutes, you will be in trouble. Right. So what you need to do, the first few minutes. Talk about something you are confident about. You really know it, which is yourself. Talk about who you are, yeah? What you do, what are your hobbies. That will, you know, start the engine to run, yeah? Definitely you will not feel any of these about telling information about yourself, yeah? <laughs> okay, and how to over overcome stage fear? Well, there are a lot of psychological, uh, what do you call it, books uh, and uh, ways, methods to overcome. Some of them will be, uh, people will tell you to be yourself, yeah? Don't try to act as someone else. Be yourself, be the way you talk, yeah? Don't afraid from who you are. People might judge you, that's fine. Don't care, simply, yeah? Remind yourself that no one is perfect, and that's true. It's a true statement. No one is perfect. No one was born perfect. Uh, practice makes the man better, obviously. Remind yourself that mistakes are part of life. Yeah, that it, it depends.
depends on you how it depends on you how you translate the mistakes how you get the benefit of that mistake keep trying till you overcome the fear don't uh, when we say trying doesn't mean fight the fear while you are on stage you should have thought about how to overcome the fear before you stand on that stage it's not like when you come, okay, today I'm going to present to you, and now you are start thinking, what, how can I <laughs> not uh, have the stage fear? Yeah? Uh, uh, breathe deep, again, like what you told us yesterday, to calm down your energy. Uh, practice breathing techniques. Yeah? There are a lot of techniques. Uh, Yesterday, when we were taught about the technique, when we push the energy we need to breathe, right? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. But I know, for example, the, uh, to calm down the breathing technique, how to, how to do so. Yeah? So basically, you take deep breath, keep the breath there, and for a few seconds, then deeply exhale, for example. Yeah? And there are others. I, I, in fact, I've been to one training about breathing techniques and it's uh, two hours plus we are just learning the techniques of breathing yeah. <laughs> and seriously i cannot recall all but uh, it, it is beneficial like one of this uh, that to calm down that's what i kept in mind because i was always stressed in work yeah. so uh, it stayed in my mind <laughs> yeah okay so let's have another uh, video about the eight uh, techniques Eight ways to um, overcome stage fright. It's time to hit the panic button. Because you have to give a speech. You're doing whatever you can to get out of it, but unfortunately, you have to do it. You know you're going to fall on your face and be a laughing stock to the whole audience. Your friend Michael Lunt's here. Can we stop the dramatic music? Thank you. I used to be terrified to speak in public. And in my last year of graduate school, I had to speak for 40 minutes. <laughs> but my friends, I'm here to tell you I survived those 40 minutes. It went well. And now when it comes to public speaking, I absolutely love it. And it's because I use these eight tips discussed in this video. The first tip, you're not nervous. You're excited. Your heart's racing. You're breathing really fast. You didn't sleep the night before. You have sweaty palms because you're nervous about speaking. This little girl feels the exact same way. Her heart's racing. She's breathing fast. She didn't sleep the night before. She has sweaty palms. But she's excited because she's meeting Santa Claus. If you tell yourself you're nervous, you're setting yourself up to fail. You're having the same response whether you're nervous or excited. Tell yourself you're excited and you'll do much better. Tip number two, you love your audience. I learned this tip from magician Howard Thurston. Before performing, he would tell himself repeatedly, I love my audience, I love my audience, I love my audience. Doesn't this make sense? If you're speaking with someone you love, friends, family, isn't it much easier to speak to them? Tip number three, talk to one person at a time. I learned this tip from Zig Ziglar. He explained that when he talks to thousands of people, he really only speaks to one person at a time. He'll make eye contact with that one person, speak for a sentence or two, and then move on to the next person. I'm sure you have one-on-one -on -one conversations all the time, and that's all you're doing when you're speaking. You're speaking to one person at a time. Tip number four, realize your audience wants you to succeed. Have you ever been at a wedding or some kind of party and someone stands up and gives a toast and they lose their place? What goes on in your head? You feel bad for them, and you're hoping they turn it around. That's exactly what's happening when you're up there too. No one wants to see a train wreck. Don't let one little mistake derail you. Get back on track and know the simple fact that your audience wants you to succeed. Tip number five, imagine your speech going well. You're probably using your imagination already, but it's the worst case scenario. Everything that's going wrong will go wrong. That's what you're picturing in your head. But let's change that. I want you to close your eyes and imagine the speech going well. You're speaking with confidence. You're standing upright. You're confident. You're telling jokes and people think they're funny. You are just killing it. It's that imagination that'll help you get there. Just visualizing your success will help you make that success a reality. Tip number six, practice in front of an audience. I've had many people tell me to rehearse in front of a mirror, but that doesn't help you. You're anxious because
because it's the people you're speaking to. So the best way to get over it is to practice in front of other people. Family and friends are great, but I think Toastmasters may be better. It's a speaking organization that has over 16,000 clubs in 142 countries. The best way to get over your fear is to face it, and this is the place to do it. I've gone up and I've given three or four dozen speeches that have been absolutely terrible, yet despite my terribleness, I always get an applause. The same will happen for you. If you need a little confidence when it comes to speaking, this is the place to get the encouragement and support you need. Tip number seven, follow this sign. Slow down, observe, and enjoy. This is a great tip. Just live in the moment. Don't worry about the next sentence you have to say. Just focus on the one you're currently saying. Look around, observe. You may be able to perform much better if you're just living in the moment, taking the response from the audience, and going from there. There may be times you forget what you want to say, but just slow it down, take a second, regroup, and you'll be great. We saved the best tip for last. Number eight, speak to give, not to give. I learned this tip from Simon Sinek, who gave the popular TED Talk on Start With Why. If you haven't seen it, check it out. He said that's one of his secrets to being a good speaker. He's quoted saying, showing up to give is the difference between a brilliant and authentic speaker versus someone who is not. Let's think about the word anxiety. Did you notice that I is in the center? That was my biggest problem. I worried too much what people thought about me. But instead, I shifted my focus to focus on what I can give the audience, and then my anxiety went away. It'll do the same for you. I guarantee these tips will work for you because if they work for me, they will work for you. Think about how incredible you feel when someone asks you to give a presentation at work and you say no problem. A presentation at school, you say no problem. To give a toast at a wedding and you say no problem. And it's all because you use these eight tips for overcoming your fear of public speaking. This is Michael Lunks, a former shy guy, largely because I've applied these tips. I value your input, so please like, dislike, or comment below. And if you want more incredible oh, tips on fear of communication, subscribe <laughs> to my channel today by hitting that little circle above okay. my finger. So, you hear the uh, eight points he mentioned? Yeah. So, I, for me, uh, I might uh, agree with all of them, uh, except maybe one I'm halfway agree. But anyway, different people, they have different opinion, yeah? So, when he talked about this uh, first uh, point, He's talking about the energy. We said there is energy inside you, yeah? And think he said uh, it's excited, right? That's the thing. It, the energy is there. But if you want to keep it and think about it or use it as a fuel for negativity, then you will be uh, fall into the trap of stage fear. But if you re uh, convert that, uh, what they call, uh, that feeling of excitement and the energy into excitement as a fuel for excitement, I mean, then yes, you will be confident about your uh, presentation. Yeah. Uh, here, for example, he mentioned about love your audience. Love your audience, uh, frankly speaking, I did face that before. If you were forced to present something to some people, and these people, you know, they don't care. Yeah, you know that uh, somehow you or you have the feeling maybe they don't like you. Yeah, in that case, you're not like them. Yeah, you don't want to share with them. Why? why you, you know, like so. There's some internal feeling. If you have that feeling, you will be presenting without. Uh, how to say, like, uh, fake, like, you know, you were just talking to them information, this is like this, this is like that, okay, and next slide, and like this, like that, without uh, really giving the effort, the enough effort to explain every point deeply, uh, you know, so it, the, to transfer the context from your mind to their minds, yeah? So that's, that's the point what he mentioned, love your audience, yeah? Uh, because if you don't, then you will definitely not deliver the message. And others, I think the points are uh, clear. Do you have any questions so far about the points in this video or before, whatever we mentioned? Okay. Yeah. Okay.
Moving on. So now we finish with the stage fear. Now we want to do the preparation for our uh, what we call it? our presentation. So in here, there. This is one approach. There are actually many other approaches, but this is one approach called the eight-step approach. There are other ways, as I mentioned, different people might work differently. In fact, if you work in different companies, especially big companies, they have their own way of doing things. So maybe the eight will become 14 steps. They have their own. Like for instance, you finish step two, and then you have to go three, and then from three, you have to back to manager, approve, and so on, yeah? So that's for companies, yeah? But these are the common uh, stages. Uh, first, know your audience. So when you want to go presentation, try to have knowledge who your audience are, yeah? If you don't know them, it's like some, uh, let's say, uh, I mean, random people here yeah, from different, pe different backgrounds, uh, you have to prepare yourself to be talking to different people coming from different backgrounds, yeah? Uh, if you have the time before the presentation, maybe you can go and greet some of them, ask about their backgrounds, yeah? So that happened, for example, to me. Uh, when I go to some conferences, and then I talk to people before my session, I know their backgrounds. One from chemical, one from petroleum, the other, you know, maybe from IT technology. Then the examples that I will give during the presentation, yeah, I might relate to their work, so they will understand it in a better way. Yeah. Uh, secondly, know your purpose or aim. Yeah, you must know your aim. Without knowing your aim, uh, you will be uh, shooting, you know, randomly. <laughs> yeah, throwing words randomly, and we will have one live example about this. How important actually this number two is. Yeah. Um, I, I remember even Anita mentioned uh, that uh, uh, there are some people they just jump directly to slides. They do the slides with, before they do the course outline and everything. Yeah. And that will create some um, mismatching between the two. So structure the body after you know the aim, structure the body of your presentation, plan your beginning. Plan your ending, prepare visuals, if you have some visuals which we will see even how to do some of them. Uh, anticipate questions, expect or try to think what kind of questions might be asked about this topic. Yeah? So um, how do you do that? Yeah, I mean, yesterday I'm talking about stage fear. Then maybe you will ask me, um, what are the examples, any examples for that? Then I have to be prepared with examples in my mind. You know what I mean? So um, if, let's say later on we will be talking about uh, uh, visuals. If I just talk about visuals and I say, okay, put some visuals on your slides and then move on, the question, question might pop up, how to do it? How can I do the, then I have to be prepared. Uh, I, maybe I have some website I will, as I'm going to show you because I'm prepared, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. Uh, so this meaning of expect, yeah. Nevertheless, you cannot expect all the questions. And there are ways of how to answer, how to avoid <laughs> the answers. Because there are some questions uh, you yourself might not know the answers. Then we will be talking in the next few slides about how to avoid them somehow. Yeah? Professionally talking. <laughs> not running away from them, yeah? <laughs> okay. And finally, practice presentation. Practice this is what I didn't uh, really 100% agree with the point of the vi previous video. He said, don't practice with mirror, practice with audience. Okay, fine, that's fine. But for beginners, they want to see themselves, how they are, how they look like when they present, yeah? Uh, they uh, want to see the pauses, their pauses, you know? That will give them some, some confidence factors, yeah, with the mirror. With audience, yes, that will move to the next level, different level of confidence, yeah? So pr practice presentation in the front of mirror, in the toilet, it's fine, as long as you are comfortable with it, but do practice with audience as well, yeah? 
hopefully your friends maybe, your uh, brothers, sisters, yeah? Okay, so th this is the example I mentioned just now, to know your aim, yeah? Uh, now, let's do this light activity, okay? Orally, orally, learn the appearance count of the letters A, E, I in the following words. So can you take maybe a paper or something and count how many A's, how many E, how many I? So how many A's? How many A's you found? in sequence. Can you? The listed months I did just now in sequence. As, as they appear just now in the same sequence. Oh, you mean in the same order? Yeah, just now how I showed them on the slide. So the learning outcome is saying we want you to list them down in sequence. Can you? If not, why? Because I did not explain that. The learning outcome was this, to teach you the sequence they appear. But where I diverted your, I presented actually the, the slide, the previous slide, as focus on A, E, and I counting. You see, I mean, I'm not following the outcome. I presented, but I did not follow the learning outcomes. Yeah? How about the second? From the listed months, how many of them start with S? Before I designed 
the slides, I need to know the aim. Yeah? How I'm going to present it. It might be the same slide, but I present it in a different way. So if I don't know the aim, why I have this, then I'm, I might divert your thinking somewhere else. Yeah? I might not achieve the learning outcomes. Okay? Yeah. This is a live uh, example about you must know your aim. Okay? So this is unit one. Now we have checkpoint one. For every checkpoint, we have a list of questions. Okay? <laughs> now we need to, to see how did you get the information. So again, it will be timed questions. Uh, we call speedy tests. A clock will appear, something, and you have to find the answer. Okay? Simple, simple. <laughs> okay. Ready? Go. 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 So B and B and D. How about others? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So stage fright, performance activity. Yeah. And Z and Z and D. Sorry. Okay. the end of 
unit one. The next unit will be communication styles. So let's have a short break and then we back. A few minutes only. Just drink water, toilet, no problem. Yeah? <laughs> I do need water. <laughs> so, this is leather in front. Is that? Leather in front. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, so I keep it here. In fact, um, keep it all the time running. Uh, I think better because you see she faced problem with. Uh, yeah, so just keep it running. I think better.
better, so no need to merge later on. I mean, it's easier. I'm afraid we will face the same problem as well. Uh, but I don't know about the memory. If it's yeah, I'll worry about that. So, uh, and uh, after the break, after we finish the thing, mm -hmm. and maybe copy it directly to the hard disk so that mm -hmm. we make sure uh, we have different belief in it. them or not? Uh, you start already yesterday. Oh. The videos? No, I already go. We use the laptop, yeah? Okay. What's happening actually uh, with you yesterday? Like, oh, it's hanging, you said? Hanging. Yeah, I mean, like, so while it's uh, uploading. I think my memory ran stuff. Oh. So, shall we continue? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs>
high school where you get to go to school. Okay. Okay. So we'll come back. The next uh, unit, unit two, is the communication styles or communication skills. So when you act as a presenter and you want to deliver a context from your mind to the audience, you have to have some kind of connection so that you can communicate. Yeah? Uh, that connection might not happen with 100% of the audience. Yeah? It might happen with some, but not with others. Yeah? Uh, so for you, as a presenter, you have to make sure that you can communicate or you can connect with as many audience as you can. Yeah? So let's see how we do so. What what's the meaning? What does it mean communication style? Okay? Uh, you can this one is me. Let me try this. Maximize your professional presence. Communicating with confidence, we will come and explain each of the reading. Verbal communication, non-verbal communication, culture, cultural considerations in communication, culture and presentation. Uh, you might be wondering what's the difference between these two. We will come to it today. And questioning and listening skills. Okay? So each of these is a whole topic by itself. So let's come and try to explain one by one as much as we can. So maximizing your professional presence. Uh, just now we mentioned that mm, we human beings, we tend to be judgmental, right? So you, uh, I'm sure you have heard this, uh, they say uh, people will look at your first impression, they will remember always your first, the first impression about you, right? Okay, you as a presenter, when that first uh, impression happened? Actually, it happens the moment you enter your uh, stage. Yeah? So I call you this as my stage. Okay? It's not the moment you start your presentation, not. It's the moment you, you stand or walk in to your stage. Yeah? How you look like, how you are walking. Uh, maybe later, if you before you start a presentation, how you talk to people, yeah, that will give impression. That's your uh, first impression. A lot of presenters they fall into the trap. They think that first impression will be happening when they first start the slides and start presenting. Actually, not. The first impression happened before that. So make your confidence entry when your first impression. Use positive face, uh, positive face impressions and body gestures. Okay. Uh, for this, uh, in fact, there are a lot of uh, new generation. They they really don't care about the positive or, or uh, giving the positive face or impression or body gestures. They know what gestures are from the mobile. Yeah. What is this gesture? What is the emotion? And when you talk to them, they will tend to copy the, emo the emojis, you know? Like, smiley, they will do it like that. Yeah, they will do it like this, maybe. Sad, they will do it like this. They tend to follow that. Yeah? Nowadays, there is this the love thing, yeah? Uh, this one actually from the emojis as well. <laughs> when they want to show love, they will show a heart, something like that. Yeah? But actually, a human being. Uh, need when, when you want to communicate with someone, you need to make the person, the front person, comfortable with you. How to do so? Maybe smiling, yeah? And instead of showing negative face impression like this, you know, and you are talking, uh, today you are going to talk about this and like that, yeah? Uh, give some face, some, maybe open your eyes, give the front person the feeling that you are welcoming him or her, yeah? Don't say like like this, you know, like uh, you know, give the the scared face, because that is your wrong impression. Yeah, uh, don't wink like always, like do like this, you know. There are some people uh, I know that some people they do it actually because this is their way of talking in street. 
but not your presentation. Like uh, suddenly, and then you look to Vicky and say, "Hi, Vicky, how are you?" <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there are a lot of people actually they fall to these traps. Smile, I'm great. Uh, smile. That's talking about before before the presentation. Yeah. Always a smiling face. Doesn't mean like grin and joy or give like yeah. Just a smile. I mean, not, don't make it sad. As simple as that. Yeah. And greet them. Greet your audience. Remember a few minutes ago I mentioned that if you have a chance before start presentation, go and greet people. Hi, how are you? Uh, uh, Silva, where are you from? Yeah. Uh, try to know about the culture. Yeah. Background of the person. What he works. Then go to next. Hi, Vicky, how are you? I'm Victor Nathan. Uh, you know. So as well, try to know more about her. That will help you first give you confidence that you already have uh, some relation, you already know your audience. They will feel comfortable with you, they will feel like, oh, he greeted us. Yeah? So you already want connections. Connections. You have to keep that connection on. Yeah? Make your walking and move and clap. Okay, this one might not be applied here because the place is quite small, but if it's a stage, then uh, make sure how to move on the stage and don't like keep, for example, moving randomly for no reason. Yeah? Try to give a reason why you are moving to here. What does that mean? It's part of body language thing. Like, for example, I'm standing here. Let's say this stage is open. Yeah? Now I'm actually, uh, this is my stage because the screen is here, right? And if I move on, maybe I will block the screen. So this way, I, this is my stage. Let's say the stage is open. So when I start talking about this, I will say, okay, today we are going to talk about maximize your professional presence. So let's move to point number one. The first is make your confidence. And so on. Now I'm like this. <laughs> okay? So when you move on here, one step, talk about step number one. Then you want to move, talk about step number two. Finish step number two, move on to somewhere else, and talk about number three, and so on. Yeah? Make a reason uh, for your movement. Don't, go, don't just keep moving around, because people want to receive from you, receive information. If you keep rolling around, they, their mind will be busy following your movement and not focusing 100% with what you are saying. Okay, so uh, that's the movement plan. Um, okay, the next is use your voice as clear as possible. Clear does not mean loud. Yeah, uh, there are a lot of people who might run away actually from you if you are loud, talking loud, right? Uh, yeah, it happened, right? I have one uh, I have experience when I was a student. One of the lecturers really loud, I cannot really receive not even single information from him. I had to take tuition outside. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, as well, this, uh, this, there is misconception about, about this matter. Some people think it clear means love. It's not. Yeah. You have to choose your tone, up, down, when you talk up, when you talk down, when to pause uh, while, while you are talking. Yeah. Don't make it like a newspaper. <laughs> Just reading <laughs> continuous, yeah? Okay. And finally, interact with your audience. Uh, that's the, the interaction that we always have. Like for, uh, suddenly in the middle, uh, for example, I ask uh, Vicky just now to read, for example. Uh, then maybe I will ask uh, someone to, to say something or to uh, ask a question and answer, answer and so on, yeah? So try to interact. Sometimes the interaction might not be a uh, matter of, I mean, the topic of our presentation. Uh, let's say, I, I'm talking about, uh, let's say, this morning, for instance, yeah? I will say, uh, smile and greet, okay? And then after that, I will go and say, uh, Silva, I can see you are always have a smiling face, for example, yeah? <laughs> you know? So, I mean, can go out a little. Uh, sometimes can throw some light joke not for the sake of making people laugh, but to change the mood, yeah? So that's kind of interaction as well. 
to keep the connection on. Yeah. So where to plan uh, to plant on the stage? So as we said, assuming that th that this is the stage, okay, the green one is the stage, and your audience sitting here. So when you plant in, if let's say in this case here on the left, there is no slides screen. There is no slide screen. It's just like uh, TEDx talking, for example. The screen is very up, so you don't care whether it's here or not. Because when you move, you will not block your head, will not block the screen. Yeah? So in that case, you have to choose where to stand. Yeah? Either here, can move to here, can move to here. Yeah? Don't enter and stand somewhere at the back side. Yeah? That will give indirect impression to people that you are trying to be hiding from something, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you go to the very side here, uh, corner and the whole stage is open, those people sitting on this side, they might have some <laughs> something, you know? It might not be something really valid 100%, but it's appealing. You know, sometimes, you know, the feeling cannot be expressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's wrong? Why are you standing there? I cannot see him. Oh, okay, I am off. I don't want to watch anyone. It's just like internally happening. <laughs> yeah? If there is a slight screen, like our situation here, I have to consider that and stand on the side. Can be here, here, here. It's fine. Yeah? In this situation, I have only one X. Yeah? <laughs> That's here. <laughs> yeah. Okay? So you have to plan, uh, and you have to uh, to know where you are planting on the stage. Uh, stage plan. You can divide your stage into always three parts, usually three parts. Yeah, it's either vertically or horizontally. That's fine. Okay. Again, the audience here. So when you want to uh, walk and talk about, oh sorry, you want to, to uh, walk around. As we mentioned, you can move here, here, here. You, it's your choice, right? But when you divide uh, horizontally, then you will have actually uh, three stages, right? Maybe you want to divide it this way. When you stand backside, you are talking about the generic point, okay? Let's say I, I'm talking about uh, communication styles. So I stand here and I say, sorry, side here at the back. I say, now let's talk about uh, communication styles. Now I move forward. Okay? I will say the communication styles has these points: one, two, three, four, eight styles. Now let's go and talk about each of them. Now I move forward. Here, when I reach to this point, I don't to talk about the details, the deep details. Yeah. Uh, of each of them. In this case, I have eight communication styles, right? I can move one here, the next will be here, the next will be here, and so on. Yeah? So it's, it's your choice how you want to manage. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so let's see just. Uh, it's not really short video, but this lady, she is one of famous uh, presenters, and she is telling her, her way of presenting. If you ever had to give a speech or do public speaking or work a room, you know how intimidating a large stage can be. So in this video, I want to tell you how to work a stage like a pro. And a little secret bonus, we also have a live audience. Here we go. <laughs> to our course, People School. It's our new flagship course. It's 12 advanced people skills. And I thought it was only fair to give you a little sneak peek into how to work a stage like a professional. So we're going to go through our five steps together with our live audience and talk about how to do it. So the first step here is that the stage is your signal. What I mean by this is most speakers present their content or prepare their content and just think about the verbal. Maybe they think about a little body language. What they don't realize is that the confidence they use when working a stage is often a signal to the officers at the podium as they're walked to the podium with their notes. The subconscious signal there is that's the only way they can think. That if someone comes on stage with 
the honey notes, and they work the entire space, the signal there is loud. They know their content so well, they can actually work the entire space. So even if you know your content so well, if you don't know how to work the stage or work the space around you, it can be a signal to your audience of low competence or low confidence in your actual work. So my big point here is to prep your stage plan with your content plan. So don't just go with an outline for your content and your ideas. Think about how can you match your content plan with your stage plan. I'm going to give you some ideas for that in the next step. So your step, next step, step number two, is that the stage is your muse. So when an audience is listening to you for more than two or three minutes, and there's not a lot of movement, not a lot of dynamism, not a lot of hand gestures, the brain begins to go to sleep. And I think the onus is on us to be able to create motivating, engaging, different content. So if you lock in on a podium, or if you stand in one part of the stage the entire time, your audience is having to work harder to be able to stay awake for your content. Whereas, if you use the stage as a piece of your content, a way to add in energy and creativity and movement, that helps your audience stay awake to then take in more of your content. So keep the audience awake with your movement. And don't be afraid to work it a little. So a lot of the time, right, gotta work that stage, a lot of the time speakers get on stage and they're very nervous. So they think, okay, I'm going to plant right here, and I'm not going to move. I'm just going to deliver, deliver, deliver. But your speech is not just about right here. It's also about the entire room. So don't be afraid to work all angles, and I'm going to show you how to do that in step number three. Step number three is that the stage is your foundation. It's the area of your content that's going to ground you. If you know how your content flows, that can also help you with your stage flow. So your content should be matching your stage movement. Think about how your content goes. Usually you start with the beginning, beginner level tips, then maybe you move to medium or advanced, for example, and you end on some kind of really important next step or conclusion. Your stage could match that flow. So for example, if you look at a typical stage breakdown, in this rectangle you have beginning, middle, and end. What if you matched your content with beginning, middle, and end? Or what if you did all of your openers here, your examples, your meat, your science, your case studies here, and you call to action at the end. Or maybe you decide you want to only reserve the middle part of the stage for your most important point. And that way, when you take this part of the stage, the audience knows something good is coming, right? So you want to map out your stage either in terms of chronology, so beginning, middle, and end, level of importance, so maybe most important side stories, or examples case studies, or methodologies for breaking your content in different scenes. You also could think of this in terms of intimacy with your audience. So the other way a stage is broken up, or the quadrants, are back, middle, front. And this has to do with my relationship with you. So for example, when I'm all the way at the back, I'm the farthest away from you. I'm thinking big picture. I'm thinking strategy. In fact, I typically start a lot of my videos back here. And I'm giving you a basic overview. Then as we get a little bit more into the content, I go closer. When I share a personal story, I'm usually in the middle. And when I'm talking about you, or what I want you to do, I get really close. That's a way for me to show the progress of the intimacy or where I want to be thinking. So you can also think about how to outline your stage movement in terms of your relationship with the people who are listening. All right, number four, practice your stage first impressions. First impressions are so hard and they last so long. But most people forget to practice. They think about their opening line, they think about their closing line, but they don't think about that moment right before they deliver. So what happens is, how many times have you seen this? Someone's off stage, and they're like... That's the interview. And then they plant. The problem is, is, their first impression already happened. It happened the moment that you came into view. So I want you to not only think about your opening line, but how you are going to take the stage. First question you want to answer, where will you enter? Are you entering on steps? Do you want to build that into your introduction? Are you entering from the stage left, backstage, front of the audience? Get yourself ready for that. Second, where will you plant? So the other thing that happens with speakers is they'll take the stage, and then they don't know exactly where to stand. They kind of have this moment where they're trying to find their place on the stage, and they're pivoting the entire time. They're either walking back and forth or waffling. I want you to actually find a place to plant and have a plan for it. The reason for this is 
that makes your walk more purposeful. The reason why TED Talks can sometimes work so well is they tell you exactly where they want you to plant, right? They give you that little red carpet, and that's all you got. What's nice about this is when you're off stage, you know exactly where you're going. It's you walk right towards it, and you plant there. I want you to make up your own TED carpet. Wherever you want to plant, that's where you're going. You're making eye contact with it, and then you're planting both feet. That gives the kind of purpose and confidence, that first impression, which you really want. So here, I think, are your three options for planting, my favorites. You have three choices when you plant. Typically, you want to be in the front quadrant of the stage, especially if they haven't met you before. This is because you're trying to show kind of intimacy, right? So you want to meet them for the first time, especially if you're coming from off stage. I like the front and either quadrants. They all mean something a little different. So front and center, if I am here, I'm ready to talk to you. From the side, especially if you have slides behind you, you might want to actually give space to those slides. If you have a highly technical presentation, introducing a movie or a video or a visual, you might actually want to let that take center stage. So you want to plant based on the goal for your entire presentation. So number five, work with what you got. So sometimes you're going to get to a stage, you're going to do a presentation, and you're not going to like the shape of the stage. It's going to be a weird shape. Or maybe they're going to give you a podium and say, you can't leave this podium. Or maybe, lucky you, you've got a TED or TEDx talk, and they tell you, you got this red circle. That's all you can do. Or maybe you have odd shapes. There's things and tables on the stage. What you want to do is make sure that you're prepared for anything to happen. All these laws still apply. For example, on my TEDx talk, I was given that red carpet, right? And I was so nervous. I'm a stage mover. Right? I use the stage a lot. And I asked them, can I get off the carpet? And they said, no, if you leave the red carpet, your video will be disqualified from TED.com. And I was like, OK, no pressure. So what I did is I set myself up for less movement by wearing the highest heels I own. <laughs> I literally got the highest pair of heels I have. They're very uncomfortable, and they, it's really hard to move in them. And so I wore those on stage because every time I had the instinct to move, I didn't. <laughs> Right, they kind of anchored me and grounded me. I also used my red dot. So in my talk, I have a little side circle, a middle side circle, and an end. And I actually do take little steps in my TED Talk. And that is my way of showing just a little bit of movement. Same laws of movement apply, just in a little bit of a smaller space. So work it, work what you got. It's all going to work as long as you follow the laws. What you want you to think about here is that movement, content fluidity, so how easy your movement Lows your content, and planning your content with your stage movement, all those laws still hold. And if you go with that, you're going to be able to rock that stage like a professional. So if you like this video, I would love for you to join People School. Look at all these amazing people who did it. So if you're curious about food. So basically what she talked about is, what is exactly the same what I talked about, that she presented it her own way, right? And she is more entertaining. She is more beautiful, you know, right? <laughs> that being fair. This woman, in fact, she uh, she is one of the famous presenters. I always forget names. I tend to forget names. Uh, there are actually hundreds or maybe thousands of good presenters out there, but you can be like her or even better. Yeah. With practice and training. And the right training, yeah, should be okay. Okay, the next communication style is the nonverbal communication. And nonverbal communication comes in different uh, forms as well, yeah? Kinesics, uh, body language gestures, artifacts. The way of dressing and accessories you are wearing, yeah, uh, all these you have to be aware of, yeah. Uh, so, uh, for example, just for example about artifacts, yeah. Uh, I saw someone before. He is associate professor, university. His students they don't respect him for a reason, very simple reason. He is knowledgeable. He is doctor. PhD holder, 
from Australia, as I remember. Yeah? But these students, they don't respect them. Why? Because of his watch and the experience he's wearing. He is, you know, like PhD author and associate prof, he's wearing the, you know, the, the type, the big watch like this, you know, the, the very uh, teenage style, you know? Uh, and white color, by the way. It was so white, yeah? Uh, rings, not one ring, five, four rings, you know? That's, it doesn't match that character of professor, yeah? As, as a university. Uh, okay, uh, we will be talking actually as well more about this, but anyway, uh, artifact usually depends on what event you are presenting in. Yeah? If let's say you are talking about academic, then you have to wear tie, maybe not, yeah, depends, but usually a tie, necktie, uh, a short shirt, maybe a half full, it's fine. Uh, if it's possible, uh, a coat, uh, what they call the blazer, yeah, um, long trouser, and so on, right? But if you are, for example, presenting for um, the children's birthday party, you don't want to go with necktie to them, yeah? <laughs> Definitely. Maybe you want to wear some clownish thing, yeah? If you want to present to, for example, Sport people, like yesterday we had a sport session, right? You don't want to wear that necktie to, I mean, Dick, you want to wear necktie there, here, right? So have to wear a sport clothes and so on, yeah? So that artifact, in fact, will give some value about you as a presenter. And it has to be changed and judged. You are the one who judge what to wear, what to do, yeah? Uh, Proximex, distance with others. Okay, I'm not sure if you have faced this before. Uh, have you faced or been to someone always like when you want to talk to you, he's like, stop, hi, how are you? You know, like, I go for one uh, way, he comes to you. <laughs> have you faced that? Has you been? I've met many people actually, like a few, not many, but a few. Uh, that might annoy people if you are very close. Some people might not feel comfortable. The connection, remember we said you have to communicate? Without connection, you cannot communicate. So if you do that, we try to be uh, nearby the person too much near, you let them break the connection and run away <laughs> from you. <laughs> yeah? The country. <coughs> I, I went to Scandinavian country. The space is longer. Yeah. They don't go, you can see when they line up. Mm. There are all these people, like, they yeah. are, you see the foreigner like us, mm. we line like the person is here oh, in yeah. front. Uh -huh. When they finish, they line up. Yeah. It double or triple the space. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. From Malaysia, we try close. to get close. Yes, close. Yeah. Even right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, actually, see, yeah, yeah. Right. actually not, not only, I mean, I, because I travel different places. You see, in Iraq, for example, because I'm Iraqi, I find, for example, the distance, if I want to go to a person, to be like almost like a meter, it should be, something like that. Yep. But seriously, I've been to other countries, no, they are really near, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, I don't know what, what they feel, but is it, I don't know, they feel closer, I'm not really sure what they thought makes them go very near, okay? And sometimes, uh, frankly speaking, uh, they have mouth, uh, yeah, breathe, right. you know, like, right. oh man, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, but everything, when you stand so far, you scared. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, that will not happen on stage, definitely. But the concept here is, you, uh, you imagine, you hear what she said just now, the lady, uh, if you are at the back of the stage, you you just you are giving the impression I'm talking about something strategic, you know, something basic, uh, generic. But when you come very to the very near edge of the stage, you are telling the audience it's something close to you, yeah, it's something really important point. So that's um, what they mean by it. Uh, chronomics, time use and punctuality, yeah. Uh, Definitely have to be punctual uh, again. <laughs> uh, vocalics, okay. Speaker tones, loudness. 
this one really important. Um, sometimes, even myself, uh, I tend to have the same tone. Yeah, people usually they have. I this is their voice, right? But it would be very good if you could, uh, when you want. Yeah, I mean, you could change your tone, voice tone, when you talk about different uh, level of importance of information. Like for example, if I want to say, let's say I want to read this, okay? I want to emphasize on Eddie Murphy, the name, the name. I will say, Eddie Murphy, non-verbal communication. You see the voice. So when I want to emphasize, I make it loud. Then after that, I back to the normal. Yeah? If I want to say non-verbal, uh, the, that's the, the, the focus, I will say, and Murphy, non-verbal communication. Yeah? So you see the, the tone? Yeah. So that's as well some type of uh, communication. Uh, haptics, touch, and show feelings. Well, uh, that's I didn't practice. Usually we don't really do that, I mean, in, <laughs> on stage. <laughs> yeah. But uh, let's say, let's say if you want, you see someone sad, you don't say anything. You just come and put your hand on the head. Yeah, it, it's, you only communicate with that person without words, without anything, right? So it's non-verbal. Let's see. Uh, we will be talking a bit more about uh, non-verbal in a minute. But let's see this video, the Edmurphy non-verbal <laughs> communication. Okay. Uh, it's a short, just short part of the movie, actually. Let me get started before you do that. So why don't you say, uh, what's that? Uh, three, four, two, one. Uh, would you care for a pastry? In terms of the meaning used, 
Verbal communication, use words or voice. Use words by when you write a letter to someone, yeah? Or you are you saying it to some uh, person. While nonverbal is wordless or voiceless. That's what we did today in the morning, the mimic, the uh, mimic, right? So time consuming, which one more time consuming? Sure, nonverbal communication is more consuming compared to uh, verbal. Because uh, back to the morning session, uh, icebreaker, you could simply say carpeting, uh, drawing, and writing, right? But uh, that's, that would take a few seconds, right? But if, because we did it in miming, it took us longer, yeah? Nonverbal communication. Uh, message, the wrong message delivered, yeah? That's what happened just now with Eddie Martin, for example, yeah? Uh, in verbal, rarely take place that it's said wrongly, rarely, and uh, happening of most of the time. Uh, personal presence is required. For verbal, it's not required, yeah? Maybe it's uh, recorded, maybe it's, uh, you know, uh, handwritten, but for nonverbal, because it's done by movement, uh, body language and so on, then yes, the person presents the point. Advantages for both. This one delivers clear, clear delivery and immediate feedback. So when I talk to you, immediately you can give me a feedback. Yeah? This one complements verbal communication. So with the verbal communication, I can add some body language or nonverbal uh, communication style to complement, to complete, let's say, the verbal communication, yeah? Okay, so uh, one last video before we carry on. I'm sure you have heard of this. Have you heard of this Chinese whisper experiment? No? Vicky? No? Okay. I'm sure you have seen it, but maybe you don't know the name. <laughs> It's actually, it's an experiment on how the misconception happened because of the uh, non-verbal communication. This one happened in Malaysia, I think. So they have to deliver the message, non-verbally. Different way.
Now we will compare the first and the last. So you see how the message was delivered. Not uh, like go against the flow of their 
usual way. You are presenting to them. Yeah? Don't come and say, all of you wrong, I'm right. When you do that, again, a lot of damage is done. Yeah? Say, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> it's very bad. It's quite us. Yeah? Uh, communicating with confidence. Confidence can be shown in different ways. When you do presentation, you can show your confidence, your loudness of your voice, and stability. Loudness, again, doesn't mean that very loud, but uh, it just means not hidden. It's not like you come and say, okay, I think maybe I don't talk about, you know, this, this, like that. Because when you talk with low tone, you are showing that you are hiding so Try to hide something, okay? So trying to not let us hear what you are saying so that we will not judge you, yeah? So if you talk in a clear, loud voice, unstable, not trembling, then that's confidence. Clarity of the word said, this is what I mentioned. Don't use a uh, wrong uh, pronunciation, okay? Or um, sometimes, you know, they say they swallow letters, yeah? They try to make the word not appear very clear as the pronunciation, yeah? Face expressions, we talked about this, body language, choice of words, uh, intonations, and emotions. Amount of, or actually, amount and type of movement around. All these actually will show how confident you are on stage, yeah? Uh, I'm not saying you have to have all, but you actually must have majority of them, yeah? If, let's say, you have all of them except body language, work on it. To become a better presenter, you need to work on it. So your intention to have all of these together, yeah? So that you can achieve your confidence communication. Okay? So far, any questions? Yeah? Straightforward, easy, right? So let's go to the checkpoint. Okay? <laughs> Okay, the next checkpoint as well has a few questions. I remember three as well. So, are you ready to go? Yes. Yeah? yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Yes. You don't need to know everything. No one really knows everything. Unless he or she is master of presentation, yeah? A master means like they study the science of presentation, yeah? Then, yes, okay? So actually you need to know majority of them, as many as you can. Okay, next.
And the next one. Ta -da. Oh. According to our understanding, fill the blanks. So, the mean. In verbal, what is the mean used for communication? Verbal? A voice. A voice or words, right? And not verbal? Gesture. Um, mostly. Uh, they just mentioned, yeah, true. Which is wordless means and uh, voiceless, right? Okay. The time consuming? Time consumption? Which one more time consumption? Non verbal. Non verbal, more. And this one is less, right? In terms of wrong message delivered? Uh, no idea. Uh, which one is more Mon susceptible? Verbal monkey. Which one, sorry? Mon verbal is monkey. Yeah, this one is less susceptible to have mistake, really having mistake. But this one, most probably, or most common to happen. Personal presence, which one required and which one not? Non verbal. Non uh, verbal is? One more. Not required. Can be recorded. Okay. Well, nonverbal? Uh, need someone. Need someone there. Okay. And finally, for the advantage of the verbal? It's clear. It's a clear message, huh? and? Uh, nonverbal is. No. Uh, In terms of feedback? Uh, faster. Immediate feedback. Right? And we said for the uh, nonverbal? Uh, more immediate. Um, more engaging, not really because it's kind of, yeah, but actually it complements, it completes the uh, verb, yeah? So most of the time if you use them together, verbal, non-verbal, then you are delivering the message properly, yeah? Are we good? Now, we have our light, light. Activity, then we have to go for a break. Yes. Okay? <laughs> now, the light activity. We will watch this video. Okay? And according to your understanding of communication style, unit, which we just did, evaluate the speaker communication style. Which communication styles he has? Okay? So maybe you can have the paper beside you.
it's gone. I have a son who's four, and he had this bad habit of writing on the walls with crayons. And one evening I walked into his room and he's going at it, just writing and drawing and so on, and I said, hey, 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 hey. Are you stupid? Don't you ever do that again. And guess what happened? He did it again. Nobody likes to be threatened. Nobody likes to be intimidated. His pride would not allow it. He did it again just to spite me. A week later, I walked into his room, and again, he's going at it. And this time, he was even looking at me.
this home. Ladies and gentlemen, let that be our goal. Come to share. Okay, all right, let's hear from our first place winner, Mohammed. So, who is actually the first, uh, the winner of this uh, presenter? Yes, yeah, speaking, yeah, speaking. Uh, I think 2015, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Now, what communication styles he got? Okay, that's it. Uh, that's back here, so we can have them in front of us. Okay. One by one, let's see. Maximize your professional presence. Okay, was he, did he prove his presence? Hmm? Yeah. We, even though we didn't see his entry, but he is present there. Yeah? Communicating with confidence. Was he confident when he's talking? Definitely. Verbal communication? Has it. Nonverbal? Too many, even a lot. Right? Cultural considerations in communication. Did we see it? Uh, which part? Like, do you remember? The facts about uh, smoking and all these things. Can be. Can be. Yeah, but nevertheless, he did not really touch some important, let's say, for example, religion. Mm -hmm. He did not touch religion. He did not say, uh, by the way, he is Muslim, yeah? No, but the parent style, the parenting style. And, uh... Uh, yes, so he, he just touched. Exactly, parenting, he touched uh, uh, drinking too much, drugs, and this. But he did not, for example, say, okay, uh, because Nasser is a Muslim, but he did not obey Islam, for example, he started drug and drinking or something like that. But when, if he said it this way, he would lose attention to <laughs> whoever non Muslim. Yeah? Maybe the Muslims will be strengthened, you know, a bit the uh, connection. You know what I mean? So he did have the consideration there. But not necessarily he show it, but it's there. Yeah? And a questioning and listening skills. Well, uh, you didn't see it. Yeah. Q&A. It, 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 it pause when people know and wait for them. To Something like that. But that's not the questioning skills. Yeah. That's, questioning is, he is the one who's asking the question, answering it. Yeah? Uh, he did mention like about, uh, uh, did you know that uh, people who die because of diabetes three times more than cigarettes, something like that. He said this, he made it up. But that's an argument. He questioned and he, at the same time he answered, uh, he answered. Listening skills, that's the time when he listened to people, Q and A, yeah? and then he can answer right and so on. Okay? So this guy actually, he got majority of them. He is super master that thing, yeah? And he's a, he's a world champion, you know, in his uh, field. Okay? So, that's the end of unit two. So congratulations. The next will be the very light one. We have two units more, both of them very light. Yeah, that. Yeah, is uh, creative, effective slides using using PowerPoint, and finally is to present your slides. Both of them very light, straightforward. Yeah. So now we can go for break, yeah. and this is our big break. Hopefully, it's a coffee or something. I don't know. <laughs> I still have my coffee, but it's cold now. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Do we have how long? We can finish. So I. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I know where it's warmer. These lights are very warm. Oh, by the way, you want to shut down this one? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, give it one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to off? Yeah, I think better, right? Ah, yeah. And then you'll be colder. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's carry on to unit three, which is a light unit. Both of unit three and four are light, yeah? So it's creative, effective slides using PowerPoints. Okay. Oh, sorry. Because we connected the camera just now. Okay, so creating stuff.
sides, uh, it supposedly goes this way, yeah, in this sequence. Think your goal out, do a storyboarding or lining, after that outline the slides, fill the contents, and slide course outline compliance, it's a check, okay? Um, think your goal out, remember we said about the aim, you have to know what's your purpose, what's the aim of the presentation, yeah? So try to know the big aim, after that the sub aims, then the sub of sub and so on. Yeah? Until you reach to each slide aim. So from the big uh, whole presentation aim until each slide aim. Okay? So at this level, at the very beginning, you are talking about the main goal of the presentation, the learning outcomes of the whole course. Yeah? And later on in the staging, you will, uh, when you start filling the contents, then only by then you will need to know about uh, the aim of each slide before you fill it. Uh, storyboarding we will look at, it's basically the, uh, how your presentation will go, okay? When you start and you have a goal to achieve, what path you will follow to reach your aim, yeah? That's the storyboarding or lining. Then there is a slide outline. The outline is basically not every slide to be listed. It's like the syllabus. You remember we have the, um, um, uh, what they call it? Uh, course outline. The course outlines, right? These outlines, basically, you will tell the topics, the list of topics, but you will not tell every slide title there. Yeah? You just uh, say, I'm going to talk about, for example, communication uh, styles, and then it has eight types. Um, then these are the types. I'm talking about confidence, I'm talking about body language, and so on, for example. Yeah? But you will not tell about the, every detail of each of them. Yeah? Maybe body language will take four or five slides. Yeah? You just need to tell it here as body language, that's all. You don't need to talk about details. After that, when you have already the outline, the topics, you go and fill the slides. Body language, I decide to make it, for example, five slides. Then I write them down, what are the slides? Yeah? Uh, the contents of each of them. And sure, we have to know the aim of each slide before I start filling the contents. After that, when you already have your own slides is filled, you have to check whether the uh, course outline are complied with the slides, or actually the slides complied with the course outline. They have to be in line, yeah? If not, then you have to back either to outline slides, the outline of slides, or you back to the storyboarding. Maybe you will see there is something wrong. You have to decide whether the problem is in the storyboarding or in the uh, course outline. Yeah. Storyboarding. So basically, storyboarding is abstract or generic description of a set of events. Yeah. So these events might be sequenced or related. One storyboarding might have something called the story lining. Okay, what's the difference between storyboarding and storylining? A storyboard might have many storylines. Okay, just think about it like a movie. Okay, in the movie, um, there are many characters, 100 characters, right? The first scene, three characters talking about their story. The second scene of the movie, taking other people, five other people involved in that scene, talk about some other line of the story, yeah? But together, during, while we are going uh, forward with the movie, watching the movie, we can see the relation between the lining, yeah? Together, we call the story boarding, yeah? So just put in, line that, uh, put in mind that 
the storyboard might have at or must consist at least of one storyline, but it can have more. Uh, we don't need to sketch the slides of the uh, storyboarding or at storyboarding. The, the, there are there's a lot uh, a big misconception about storyboarding. People think that storyboarding basically is sketching the design of the uh, slides. Yeah, but actually it's not. Actually, uh, it's not uh, designing, but it's actually showing the um, generic plot flow. Yeah, of the presentation. Uh, tools. Well, there are a lot of tools. Uh, you know, it's fine. It's fine. Actually. There are a lot of tools uh, we can use out there for storyboarding. These are just some of them. Uh, Storyboardthat.com, Canva.com, Boards.com, theplot.io, uh, for example. Yes. Yeah. Canva. Yeah, Canva. Uh, you see, I for me, I use Canva for designing uh, posters, uh, posters exactly. Uh, but for storyboarding, I usually use this one. Storyboard that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, different people, whatever you are comfortable with, can use. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is sample storyboarding. This is how it looks like. Yeah. So basically, you will have a picture and a title for it or description. Picture, title, description, and so on. Yeah. These not really telling the every detail of the story, as you can see, it's telling just like a snapshot of a scene. Yeah? So this is scene one, scene two, scene three, four, and so on. Yeah? Uh, if it's presentation, it's something like this as well. So you have scene one, scene two, scene three, uh, one picture representing the scene, and then description or description, uh, description for it. Yeah? So something like that. Not necessarily you draw this level of art, yeah? But uh, for you, you can just sketch it by your hand. So the storyboarding will be, uh, can be on paper. Or it can be done by uh, tools, as I mentioned just now. Okay? Uh, storyline. The beginning of presentation and its ending must be connected through a consistent storyline, yeah? So when you start telling the story of uh, Sylvine, then I have to start from the beginning until the end with consistent flow, right? Maybe the consistency here is in terms of time. Maybe the consistency in terms of uh, schooling uh, life, for example, yeah? I will go at level one, he did like this, perform like that. Then he moved to level two, he did like this, like that, perform well or not, yeah, and so on. Uh, always put this architecture in your mind. A storyline must have at least these following sections, yeah? Introduction, beginning, presentation, body content, and conclusion, yeah? That's the whole story of survival. At the same time, we have story of Vicky. That's another storyline. Together, my, with mine, we have our own whole storyboarding. Yeah? The three of us together, we make one storyboarding. This is, this is how it looks like. Uh, this is just the template you can use. Yeah? It's available online, and there are many templates, actually. Yeah? You can put the image title and the description. Okay, primary elements of slide design. <coughs> For when you create your slides, when you create your slides, uh, most probably you will have these, but a lot of people they don't really be consistent about them. What I mean is, for example, theme colors. Okay, if you have noticed my slides, for example. All the slides, they have the same background, yeah? They have the same position. Here there's number, copyrights, half title, logo, and so on, right? So this is consistent. And the colors as well, it's consistent. They are 
matching with each other. Like, for example, um, blue with uh, this light purple with the gray, they are matching somehow, yeah, with the white. If you don't have templates to follow for coloring, you might fall into contra colors, yeah? I give you an example that I did intentionally. I just maybe I have to go back a few slides. This one. This one. You see the colors. Not, not matching really. You see that pink, yellow, green. You know like this is I mean concept ecosystem, yeah? So try to avoid such thing. I, I meant to put these colors. Actually, all of these slides is very colorful like this, with very striking colors here. Yeah? Oh, sorry. Okay. So, oh, sorry. So these theme colors. If you are not really an artistic person and you need help, there is a website that will help you with this. Yeah. Color hand. These you go if you go to this colorhand.com, you will find these templates ready, okay? All you have to do, click on it, and copy the RGB of these, then use them, yeah? So you see the templates here, they are all actually matching with each other, yeah? Okay. Um, another part is the fonts. Try to use compatible fonts, what, which means, um, doesn't mean you have to use only one font on your slide. You can use many fonts, not a problem. But try to use not more than three fonts on the slide, on the whole slide. Don't use uh, one font on the first, different font on the second, a third on the third, and just keep changing. If you keep changing, uh, somehow you are giving uh, inconsistent design. I think uh, Sylvia will agree with me about this. Yeah, try to be consistent in your presentation uh, fonts. Infographics include your uh, include infographics in your um, slides. Yeah, as uh, Vicky said yesterday, a picture does what? Tell a thousand words, right? So try to use infographics uh, always. Time sequence animations, as you can see one here. Uh, but to try to make it relevant, I just put it for example here. Uh, she is a nurse actually, or a doctor, yeah. And then uh, ready templates. You can find templates online. Uh, you can use them. That will save you to choose a lot of time to choose the, the color, the font, and everything. Yeah. And ready set, a ready set of icons as well. Um, that will save you a lot of time to design your own icons. Okay. So as I mentioned, for team colors, you can use color hands. This is one of the famous, and there are others, by the way. Yeah, uh, but uh, for me, I know this one, and I use it uh, quite often, even with web design. I use this one. Uh, compatible fonts. Okay, this one uh, font space, and again, there are other websites, but this one is one of the most comfy for me. Why is comfy? Because it gives free fonts, a lot of free fonts. Yeah. So you see uh, here Marvel Arch, for example. I put just I just write here Marvel Arch. It will show me the sample. Then I can download the font. It's free. It's a free. Others, other websites are available as well. But uh, whatever I choose, nice. It's not free. It's premium. <laughs> this one they have premium as well, but they have thousands of thousands of choices. Yeah. Infographics. Okay, um, Slides Go, it's one of the nicest uh, websites. I real, really always go and use it for many uh, presentations. Yeah, Slides Go. This Slide Go provides you with templates, and not only that, with most of the um, items that you need in your presentation, like the animated uh, sequence, uh, you know, sequence animated videos and so on. Everything there, icons, they provide, yeah? You will see, you have time, the time sequence animation, slides go out there as well. And there is a story set, a PowerPoint, 
has a duty as well to create uh, the animation, as you saw in just now, for example, in the uh, How speed test. not that um, or just uh, It's sufficient, it's sufficient. Okay. Nevertheless, these will create the difficult animation in easy way compared to PowerPoint. PowerPoint needs more work mm, to yeah. do. Yeah. Okay, so these three you can you can find inside in the time sequence animations, like the nurse just now. I took it from the slides go. Icons. Uh, this website, uh, that icon, it has, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands <laughs> of icons. You can just simply download and use in your uh, website or uh, sorry, your presentation. And not only that, you can customize the colors of these. Yeah, you have here the colors, you can customize them. Yeah. Okay, discipline data. Um, there is misunderstanding for especially students, usually not really professional, but students. They think that the more data they put on the slides, <laughs> the more informative it will be. Yes. Then, they, then they bring so much data, data <laughs> numbers, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. So that's actually. Um, it's really a big mistake, yeah? So it's simply, if I want to talk about this, I would say don't tag your slides with numbers. Uh, do use infographics to show the data as information and display them orally, yeah? For instance, this one. This set of data, I don't want to show it like this. Better than this, I will just convert it into infographic. Here, I put this infographic and I will orally explain it. I will say, for example, you can see the temperature uh, is uh, at the lower half or between 30 and 40. Yeah? Uh, the humidity change from uh, 60 until, for example, here, 20 something, 25. Yeah? So you can explain it how you want, what, what you want to say about it. Yeah? But I need to show these numbers. Trust me, no one wants to read them. Yeah? Um, yeah, and then the difference between data and information as well. A lot of uh, special students again, they don't know the difference between data and information. Uh, in fact, I read sometimes technical articles talking about uh, data, uh, data science and so on, and they mention data and information as the same. Actually, they are not the same. Uh, information is basically uh, a data is basically numbers. Information, what they understand the number as. So when I say human temperature is 42, this is a number, this is data. But as information, I will say this human has big fever or high fever. Yeah? Finalizing your presentation, that's, I mean, we are talking about the design of the presentation. Put in your mind that every slide must have a title. Don't leave the slide without title. Nevertheless, if you um, see the presentations of uh, companies, corporates, uh, they might not follow this, actually. Yeah? They might have picture here, picture there, and so on, but actually there is no title. Yeah? Uh, but academically speaking, I would say every slide must have title so that we can have the generic idea. What is this slide about? Yeah? Every slide must have slide number, okay? This one to keep, it make it easy for the audience to track the, the slides. Maybe if, let's say, Vicky has a question about slide number 53. She has paper, she can write down slide 53, some keyword about the question. After I finish, I will say any questions, then she can refer. Can you click back to, uh, you know? It can happen, yeah? No. Uh, well, <laughs> not, maybe not professionally, not professionally, they will not do, but in academia, oh, yeah, all the time. And in fact, in academia, uh, when you have Bible, you will sit down in front of the panel, then they will say, back to uh, slide this one. You mentioned like this. Yeah, What does it mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how we examine, you know? Yeah. 
Uh, professionally, they will not really refer to this slide, but <laughs> no, nevertheless, people will do. People will, might, might do. There are some people. They don't look even on Google. Make it easy, no. you have You have to provide the service for them, you know? Track it. <laughs> Things to bother me. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you block the chain of <laughs> Oh yeah, so you are following the cut problem from the roots. Yes, By not giving the number. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what we were talking about that I don't need to refer back to numbers. <laughs> Actually, I read in some uh, references well before they said not only the number, put slash oh. out of how many? No. Uh, yeah. Why? They said why? Because if, let's say, the person is, uh, you know, want to, in a hurry, he wants to go. But you see, like, out of 60, and then he knows that only three slides left, so he will stay. For example, I think he just gave example. You know? <laughs> but if you want to go, you go. But if you think that, <laughs> okay. So if they see 53 only, he will say, oh, man, this is a lot of time, okay, let me leave. So he will leave earlier. <laughs> you know, okay. <laughs> okay. Slide sequence is as you plan for. Make sure that the sequence of your slides are as you plan for. Yeah. Don't put like uh, <laughs> a slide before another. Then you have to back and so on. Yeah. Like this. Like for example, you act like this. Uh, okay. This is slide. Then we'll back two slides. Then three slides forward. Yeah, they will lose the the follow up. Yeah, yeah. Presentation is like mistakes. This is the usual common mistakes. Always uh, people do too many wordings on slides. Try to avoid wording too many wordings because people they don't want they didn't come to read. They came to listen to you. Yeah, as we mentioned, it's not. Uh, remember the example of uh, Ismo, the comedian? Yeah? If the article is there, you can read it up to you. Yeah? But as you said, it's up to you. <laughs> right? But the presentation, that's why you are here. Yeah? They want to hear it from you orally. Slides without title. Avoid that. Yeah? Uh, language, wrong grammars. Well, we are not native speakers, I would say, right? Uh, not really native English speakers. But do your best to avoid uh, grammar's mistake. Yeah, don't use a slang language at all. Yeah, I I'm gonna, you know, like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, American. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, long introduction. And really, I faced the situation. There is a person What's introducing the topic. <laughs> idea slides. You know, I just come on. Where you will start? You know. <laughs> yeah. So don't do long introductions. Uh, unexplained item, picture or text. Okay. Um, you see, like for example, this picture here. I put it here. What is what impression it gives you the moment you see it? The yeah. slide. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like something wrong, right? But it refers to the mistakes. So these are mistakes. But if you put flower here, what does it mean? Beauty. Beauty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But it's wrong, actually. It's, it's not really related, yeah? So here, the item or the pictures you put, whatever, uh, try to avoid the decoration and these things, yeah? Put, uh, what do you call it? Uh, pointful pictures, as I call it, yeah? Pic the picture with points, the picture with points. Are we ready for check three? Yes. Mm. Example. Okay. Oh, false, right? You going to your paper? Uh, can be. I can use the micro tool. Can be. Tool. You can use the camera. Like what? Mm-hmm. Tool. False. False, right? Storyboarding is to sketch generic plot flow, yeah. not design. Yeah. Mm. Remember, I mentioned just now. It, you don't need to focus on the design of the uh, slides. It, this one is just about the flow of the story, how it's going. Okay, next. Oh, false, why? You cram as much data as you can. Yes, right? They look very intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, exactly, to show that I am, you know. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Okay, so we use infographics or pictures instead of data. Number three. All of them. All of them. Is it? Except, except maybe the music, but that's okay. Background music. Okay. And background dramatic music. music. <laughs> oh, good presentation. A. Yes. Okay. Background music is not, not important. Uh, background <laughs> picture is not important as well. Might be one is better. Yeah. So this one, uh, now we are done with unit three. Shall we just continue to the next? Yeah, yeah this, the next will be super slide, just tips about presenting your work. So now you have your slides, you have used the tools, uh, whatever we have gone through, the tips. Now the slides are ready, how to present them, okay? Again, when you see this, it means it gives the impression something wrong. Yeah, which mistakes? Wrong pronunciation, don't pronounce wrongly. Uh, reading the slides, okay. Reading the slides, not as I'm doing here, reading the step. They mean about wording. Don't like turn, uh, turn back, turn your back to your audience and put a lot of wording and then start reading, you know, all the time. That makes no sense. It, because they came, not, again, not to read. They can read. Why are you reading for the <laughs> The, the point of presentation is orally presenting the, uh, informa the, the keywords that you put here. Yeah? Uh, spend too long on a slide. One slide we spend five minutes. Well, maybe it might happen if it's something related to art or something, I don't know. But again, for generic speaking, don't spend long time on one slide. People will be bored. Uh, skipping slides, uh, this is what I mentioned, like let's say, you put some slide and say, okay, this one I will not watch, this one I will not watch, this one I will not, yeah? Okay. Uh, don't forward and backward with the slides. This is what I mentioned just now as well. Maybe you go two slides, then after that you forward back three slides. Then you say, and we did a long time ago like this, so you do you back the slides. The, the audience will lose the, uh, the, the consistency of the flow. Low voice and clear words. Um, we did mention as well about this. Don't do that because that will give wrong impression about you as a presenter. Yeah? Uh, Pre-presentation tips. Okay. Here, uh, practice. We said, uh, remember the law of exercise? Uh, uh, they said exercise will, uh, what? I mean, will enhance your, uh, basically your, uh, whatever your understanding, yeah? So always practice, you repeat practicing with your friends or with yourself in front of mirror, it's fine. That will enhance your ability to present. Don't fight the fear energy, transform, into, transform it into enthusiasm, yeah? Um, again, that what I mentioned before, remember the, what they call, uh, the short movie, the, the animation, yeah? Uh, she has energy, but she internally, she changed that energy or use it as a negative fuel. Instead of that, make it or transform it into enthusiasm, something about excitement. Attend other presentations, like for example, the Tahtani, the guy, the last video, yeah, the winner of or champion of 2015. This guy, for example, good presenter. There are many other presenters who are really good. Like the TEDx people, yeah? Not all of them TEDx people, but the majority of them are chosen, yeah? Uh, yeah. So when you attend these good presenters' presentations, indirectly you will grasp the good uh, way of presentation, yeah? Arrive early, okay? Um, always arrive early, then your presentation time. Why? To prepare your, uh, prepare your uh, session, whatever it is. Uh, get adjust to your, you see like this one, adjust to your surroundings. You know where are your steps, how, 
how big your area that's allowed for you to walk in, move in, where you will plant, remember? Yeah? Meet and greet your audience before starting the presentation, as well as if you arrive early and you have the time, then why not? Use positive visualization. Okay, positive visualization is basically about uh, being positive looking, yeah? Uh, as I mentioned as well previously, don't um, like use the sad face. Uh, you see, I'm a lecturer, for example. It uh, happened to me before. I, uh, I had a uh, fight with my wife morning. Then I go, at 8 o'clock, I have a lecture. You know, like, if I go to the class with the angry face, you know, like this, trust me, none of them will want to <laughs> Yeah. So forget about the problems. Use positive visualization. Take deep breath during presentation. I think Vicky will support that, right? <laughs> okay, smile always. And warm up exercise. Warm up. Huh? Energizer. Uh, it can be energizer. Not only that, uh, maybe your vocal. Mm. Uh, maybe you want to drink some water, you know? Oh, Prepare yourself. Yeah. Okay? Uh, work on your poses. Okay, uh, this one, when you will first, uh, there is visual poses and there is vocal. Visual is how you will stand, yeah? Uh, how you look like. Um, the vocal is when you will stop talking, when you will continue, yeah? You cannot just say, keep like one consistent uh, line. Yeah, exactly, without coma, without full stop, right? You have to know how long time you stop and then talk and so on. Don't try to cover too much material. Okay, this one as well, one of the mistakes students usually do, uh, but it happened maybe in, in some professional uh, training. Uh, they put too much material because they think it will be informative, but that's the time is not sufficient, right? Uh, like for instance, imagine, imagine, today the communication styles, each of them, I will put full, full information about them. The body language, I will say maybe 50 slides. Uh, confidence, 20 slides, and so on. If I put all these, we will not touch the time, the program time, yeah? Uh, actively engage with the audience, that's uh, obvious. Uh, be entertaining, okay, be entertaining doesn't mean clowning, yeah? <laughs> doesn't mean really clown, like, boy, juggling, exactly. No, really, it's it just, uh, don't be boring, as simple as that, yeah? If you want, as I mentioned as well, you might throw some simple job. It might not be for the purpose of laughing, but of changing the mood, yeah? Just change the, the air for a while. Admit you don't have all the answers. Okay, don't be like those people who, I am the super master here and I know everything, yeah? If someone asks questions, like uh, just now Sylvain asked about this, uh, if people ask you question, yeah? You are the trainer standing here. The question, you don't have the answer. Don't try to create an answer and just like this, <laughs> because you, know, you don't know about it. Immediately say, uh, I don't really know about this, I'm not aware of this, uh, you may give me your contacts and I will answer you, okay? Or if, let's say, the question, you know the answer, but it's very lengthy, something really needs a lot of explanation, then you can tell. Uh, I'm happy actually to answer you after uh, the session, or maybe you can contact me via email and I will be happy to reply to you, something like that, yeah? But don't show that, uh, oh yeah, I know everything, and then you get wrong answer. <laughs> don't do that, yeah? Uh, at the same time, don't run from questions. You don't know the answer, don't run from it. Run from it by ignoring it. Don't do that as well. Because everyone will notice, there's a question on the table, but you didn't answer, so it means you run away. What will do your professional key level in their eyes? Go down. Okay? Use uh, power stance body language. We talked about this. Drink water. Okay, your water with you always. Uh, join Toastmasters. The Toastmasters, I mean, not join the group and go and really uh, uh, talk 
you know, I mean, you can just watch them at least, yeah, as presenters. Don't be late, please. Yeah. Don't be late. <laughs> don't, be late. <laughs> don't be late. I wasn't late. No, <laughs> we start at nine. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yes, you still have ten minutes. <laughs> yes, but you're you supposed to be here early. <laughs> you see, what was it? I was ten minutes early. You see? I arrived early. Ten minutes early. Is it? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Okay. And two additional practical advices. Bring your water bottle with you, which always uh, I can see uh, Vicky does. Bring the water with you, and go to the toilet before presentation with your water. Trust me, you don't want to put yourself in that situation where you need to go to the toilet and you are presenting. Oh my God, you will not do any of the, the advices that we have talked about. Then everything will be very fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, last piece, that very last piece of advice, present well or perish, okay? Perish, smoke, okay? What's the point of this? The point is, think about it. If, let's say, uh, two companies, okay, uh, they create fun, let's say, they create fun. One company use a uh, newspaper, wrap it, and put it on the shelf. The other company uses the same product, but they put very nice balls on this one. The customer will go there. Which one will choose? The newspaper wrap or the nice box? Packaging, packaging. The packaging. Packaging is a presentation, actually. Yeah? The nice presentation. So present it or perish. Okay? The last checkpoint we go, which is the final assessment. Okay. But this checkpoint actually uh, is to for you to choose product, make a presentation style to introduce the product, how it works, why it's needed, and so on. Yeah? Present the creative slides in front of the participants. Okay? Ready to do? Go. Okay? So that's the main point. Okay. So, that's it, I guess. You can stop Vicky the video. Yeah. yeah. Then we have short break, then we can work on this. Okay? okay. Stop the video. Yeah. Because we have time. Why need to stop? Yeah, stop it.